Hi, I'm Jamie Jolly, designer of Farsight, and we wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about the strategic elements of the game, so you can start to see how your choices will affect it. The game is split into four phases. These are Events, Deployment, Specialists, and Battlefield, and each one comes with its own strategic elements for you to consider. At the start of each turn, players have a chance to trigger events. In many games, events are random and uncontrollable, but Farsight is made a little bit different by the use of the Seer. The Seer is a powerful AI-driven unit, bristling with sensors that allows it to predict future events with some accuracy. In-game, deploying Seers allows you to draw additional event cards and choose which will come to pass. Additionally, the Seer allows players to re-roll any one dice of their choosing per turn, giving players the ability to influence elements that would otherwise be completely random, like tornadoes or plagues. This allows people to turn the forces of nature against their enemies. In Farsight's second phase, players deploy units onto the battlefield and shadow map. Players deploy one battlefield unit per turn, meaning players have to choose wisely when deploying. It will be down to this early vanguard to feel out the enemy's weaknesses and capture some early bases before reinforcements arrive. This staggered deployment creates some interesting choices for the players, as what to deploy and where to deploy become important questions. On the shadow map, players are also allowed one unit per turn, and have just as important choices to make, as players have the option to focus on early surveillance with spies, um, slow down the enemy forces with saboteurs, get the edge on events with seers, or boosting their battlefield presence with supply lines. Supply lines are a specialist unit that allow you to play extra units each turn. However, these can be destroyed by assassins, so players must weigh the benefits of establishing supply lines early on and flooding the board, against the danger of them being picked off quickly in the early game by assassins. Being allowed to deploy any type of unit each turn allows for a wide array of available strategies. Do you dump your biggest units down in the first few turns and rush your enemy? Though perhaps your enemy may bring spies and saboteurs to blunt your spear tip and make them vulnerable. Or do you deploy infantry to draw out enemy specialists and reduce the risk to your heavy mechs? You could gather lots of valuable information, but find yourself up against bigger foes than you can easily handle. On the shadow map, do you deploy supply lines to quickly get forces onto the field, or do you deploy your assassins to hunt the enemy specialists? Spies give you the information you need, but saboteurs cripple the forces they reveal. Deployment in Farsight is anything but arbitrary. Behind the placing of a few cards is a world of potential advantage. We've mentioned specialists a few times here, and we wanted to discuss their place in the grand scheme of things. Specialists are an integral part of warfare, and we wanted to represent the value of those small units who have a disproportionately large effect on the outcome of conflicts. In Farsight, they are assassins, spies, saboteurs, seers, and supply lines. Now we've already talked a little about the seers and supply lines, so time to focus on the assassin. Assassins are your specialist hunters in the game. All specialists are deployed hidden to the shadow map, and on this map, assassins close in on them by hunting for a specialist in a square, and being told how far off the mark they were. Finding specialist is an acquired skill and takes a combination of intuition and triangulation. The longer a specialist operates in an area, the more information of their whereabouts they give, making it increasingly easy to find them. Farsight is a game of two halves, the battlefield with its big guns and battalions, and the war in the shadows with its subtle manipulations. If you can disarm the enemy in the shadows, you protect your plans from being hampered and clear the path to victory. All warfare is based on deception. In Farsight, we wanted to have an element of the unknown and make information gathering as important to you as combat or movement. To achieve this, we've added hidden deployment and spies. Units enter the battlefield face down, hidden from your opponent's view. Whilst hidden, the unit gains some advantages. To represent the fact your enemy doesn't know exactly where the unit is, it gains plus one movement per turn, a significant bonus that means hidden units are much more likely to engage the enemy first and have a much wider area of influence on the battlefield. In addition, the unit gains an ambush bonus, rolling extra dice in combat if it attacks from this hidden position. These benefits are huge, making stealth a very valuable asset. To counter this, you have spies. Spies penetrate deep into the enemy lines and send back information on the enemy's forces, flipping hidden units to reveal them, negating all those benefits with it. This presents players with a new choice. Do you deploy your spies early to gather intel, or use the benefits of other specialists first? Do you scour the shadow map of spies before you deploy your big units to cover the advance, or do you go in all guns blazing? Right at the heart of Farsight is the combat system. I don't know about you, but I like chucking lots of dice, but I don't want randomness to rule. I want my decisions to matter, but I don't want to have to remember lots of rules. We've tried to meld these ideas into a simple system, where you get rewarded for your manoeuvres and using the environment. All units except artillery must be able to move into the same square as an enemy to attack. 
All battlefield units have an attack and defence that represents the amount of dice you roll when you're attacking or being attacked. Onto this we apply the modifiers. Are you ambushing? Roll two extra dice. Are you flanking? Roll one extra dice. Are you being flanked? One less. After a game or two, these simple ones and twos become intuitive, and you know that holding up in a fortified objective is going to make you harder to damage, and charging down a hill is going to get you a bonus. What this combat system focuses on is contextual force. An assault unit is naturally very powerful, but if you sabotage it and flank it twice, you quickly diminish its dice pool in combat. This means that dice are heavily mitigated by your choices, where tactics and manoeuvres are key to victory. In this system, pincer movements matter, information matters, and your preparation turns before pay dividends. Well, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this quick run through of Farsight strategies. Um, there's so much more that you can get your teeth into, and I hope you all enjoy doing so once Farsight reaches your doorstep. Thanks for watching.